Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales in Kalamazoo. Today I'll be doing a video going over the primary features of this 2017 Audi Q7 Premium Plus. We'll begin by talking about the screen on the dash along with our controller and buttons down below. After that we'll work our way down into our climate control and this row of buttons just above it. We have a couple more things in the center console that we'll cover as well. And then we'll move over to the steering wheel and the buttons on it, along with the stocks behind the steering wheel. Our headlight controls and light controls here to our left, along with our driver's seat memory, window switches, mirror controls, and everything there. And finally, we have our sunroof controls, dome lights, and garage door opener buttons up above. That's where we will wrap up. Coming back to the screen here on the dash, and the screen is actually controlled by the dial down below, along with some of the buttons that you see around it. It's not a touchscreen display, so it's a little different setup than some vehicles nowadays. Using the main dial here, we can scroll through the different functions of the screen. We have vehicle, sound, radio, media, telephone, navigation, map, Audi Connect, Audi Smartphone Interface, and Settings. We'll begin by going into the radio function. We could access that using the dial, or we also have toggles here to access radio, media, telephone, and our navigation functions. So we'll access our radio. You'll see here we got our list of available stations in the area. We can use the dial there to scroll through those available stations. You'll see what their, what their name is displayed and you press on the dial to select it. You'll notice there are icons on the left and right sides of the screen. Those correspond to these buttons on the outside of the touchpad here. Pressing the left button opens our source menu where we can switch through AM, FM, satellite, I'll look at our presets or our satellite alerts. We're going to push the back button here. And if we push the right side, that opens our options or settings here for sound settings, storing this radio station as a preset. If there are radio text available, which there's not right now. Manual tuning, so if we wanted to just scroll through stations that way. We have our seek function. We have our scan function, and then radio settings. Moving to media, we can have a Bluetooth device connected here. As of right now, there is not a device connected, um, but selecting the, the left side button there gives us the option to choose what we'd like to connect, whether that's an auxiliary player or a Bluetooth connection. Moving on to the telephone function, this is where we would pair up a device for hands-free calling. Right now there is none connected, but you'll see we have the option to connect a mobile device if we'd like to. We can open the options there as well. The connection manager, let's see we can have several different connections, uh, primary phone, secondary, Bluetooth player, Audi smartphone connection for our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Moving on to our navigation, when we enter that function you'll see here it asks us where we'd like to go. If we select that, we can scroll through the alphabet here to change what our destination is going to be. We can change the state if necessary. Basically you'll go through this section here and select the letter you'd like to type. If that isn't the letter you'd like to use, you also have another option of entering your character, whether it's a number or a letter. Can actually write it on the keypad here. So if I were to draw the number five, you'll see there that it begins to Six. accept 
the things that I've typed or written, basically. And you can insert a space by swiping left to right. Space. And you can insert or delete, I should say, delete. Delete. by swiping right to left. Space. And this is just one option for you to begin to uh, plug in a destination on your navigation route here. Pressing the back button would backspace on whatever you typed up to that point. You're also able to uh, save a home address if you'd like to. And if we press that left side menu button, we have, we can enter destination, enter address, switch to map, look through favorites, our directory, search by points of interest, Audi contacts, online search, geographical coordinates. So you have a couple different ways to be able to plug in your destination. Here's our map display showing us where we're at. Going back to the menu, we've thus far covered radio, media, telephone, navigation, and map. At the beginning of this, we have vehicle settings, and those allow us to control the drive modes. We have off-road, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. Those will change some of the vehicle behaviors depending on what you're trying to prioritize, whether that's off-road handling, comfort for a longer drive, auto if you want the vehicle to decide based on your driving what you'd like it to be in, and then dynamic, which is going to give us the most uh, sporty drive handling. Individual allows us to actually control what we'd like the engine transmission, the steering, and the adaptive cruise control to behave like. We have the options of comfort, auto, and dynamic for all three of those. So you can have an individualized mode if you want dynamic engine and transmission, but comfort steering, or any combination of those. Pressing the left side button here, we have options to also look at our vehicle settings, date and time, seat functions, exterior lighting, interior lights, our uh, locking behavior with the doors, and then programming garage door opener for the buttons up above. We have our driver assistance. You'll see we have Settings for our parking aid, our adaptive cruise control, the distance warning, traffic jam assist, which is the vehicle's ability to stop you in stop and go traffic on the highway and resume your speed using the cruise control function. Ready presense gives you uh, an alert as you're getting close to an object while you're moving, uh, parking the vehicle. And then Audi side assist gives you the blind spot alert, which is present on the insides of the side view mirror there. And we also have active lane assist, which allows you to have a warning or steering correction in the case of you leaving your lane. And lastly, rain sensor for the front windshield wipers. You can look at our uh, seating heat, seat heating and our seat ventilation, as well as footwell temperatures and auto recirc modes for our uh, climate control air conditioning. We have service and checks and owner's manual in there as well. Going back to the menu, other section here is sound settings. You'll see we have treble and bass, subwoofer, balance and fade, sound effects, and audio pilot, um, which is just one of the sound settings we have available there. You'll see once we're in these sections we can change if we want surround sound, 3D effect, the audio pilot turned on which is just a sound setting that we can change. Audi Connect requires a subscription which allows you to search through things like weather, and fuel prices, parking info, travel and flight, things like that. That is again a paid subscription. Audi Smartphone Interface allows you to plug in your device to the USB port of the vehicle and use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then lastly we have settings, changing things like language, measurement units, brightness of the display, like that. 
Moving on from the screen here, down below we have buttons to select those drive modes, uh, the comfort, auto, dynamic, off-road that we were talking about earlier. We can turn off the auto start-stop function if we'd like the vehicle to not shut itself off when we're coming to a stop. We have the button to turn off the traction control, which is on by default. We have our hazard lights there, our parking sensors, our hill descent control, which on a steep grade at low speeds will help regulate that speed for you. And then the last button here actually retracts the screen into its stored position. Down below we have our climate control, along with our heated and cooled seats. You'll see here we have the heated seats for driver and cooled seats, or ventilated seats there. We have the driver's passenger control, driver's temperature control, and the passenger's temperature control there. We have our max front defroster, our recirculate mode, and our rear defroster. We have our max air conditioning, our AC, and our off switch. We can also press on the face of each of these dials to place uh, each zone into an auto mode where you have control of the temperature and the vehicle will take care of setting the rest of the things as far as fan speed, air location, and things like that. Across the middle here, we have controls for fan speed for the driver's side and fan location for the driver's side, and then fan location and fan speed for the passenger. And in the middle, we have a switch that allows us to set whether the zones are synced. So this has four zone climate control, those being driver, passenger, and left rear and right rear second row passengers. So they can each control their own temperatures um, and climate control settings that way. By toggling through the sync settings here, we can set our rear climate control independent. We can set it into a four zone and also a sync mode where all of the zones are controlled by the driver's side control and everything is, is paired to that section. Up at the front here we have a small storage cubby along with a 12 volt outlet. There's our control pad for our screen along with our preset buttons for our audio up at the top. We have our shifter which is a requires an unlock. The unlock button on the side of the shifter allows us to put the vehicle in gear by either pulling back for drive, pushing forward for reverse, then we can pull back without the unlock button to put it into neutral from reverse. Our park is button there. And you'll notice down by drive we also have sport, which we can toggle through just by pulling back, and you'll see in the bottom of the tachometer there as we cycle between those. When we're in this position, we're also able to put the vehicle into manual mode by moving the shifter to the right. And now see an M there. We can control that with the paddles behind the steering wheel, plus sign to upshift and minus sign to downshift. And we have on the shifter, plus sign to upshift and minus sign to downshift by pushing that forward or pulling it back. We have a parking brake here. Pull up to engage and put your foot on the brake and push down to disengage. And you have volume and seek buttons or skip buttons here by moving the dial clicked to the right or clicked to the left. Moving to the steering wheel, we have our heated steering wheel control here. You can see a message appear on the screen in the gauge cluster. We have a button to repeat the last navigation prompt if we had a route active. We have volume controls for our audio, a mute button in the middle, and seek buttons or skip buttons on the right and left. We have our voice command for our hands-free Bluetooth calling and a button to uh, answer an incoming call. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have the button that controls, buttons that control basically this whole cluster here, the screen in the gauges. What we have is left and right arrows, which will cycle through the tabs of information across the top. We have navigation, audio, and some trip information and fuel economy and things like that. Within each section we're able to scroll through those just by using that scroll wheel there. 
We're also able to access different functions using the buttons on the right and the left here. To do so, we have to change the view of the gauge cluster here, and we're going to minimize the dials and make the screen in the middle the bigger portion. Once we've done so, you'll see on the right side there, we now have the button that we could push to open this display function or display menu. We can use our back button to come back out of that. Now as we cycle through these different categories or different tabs at the top, you'll see they become a full screen display rather than the minimized version, like so. Looking behind the steering wheel, we have our windshield wiper controls here. Simply click those into the first position as necessary. You do have rain sensing wipers in the first position, but you can manually adjust it here as necessary. Then you have low and high speeds going all the way through the top. <coughs> Your rear wiper is just a button on the end of the stock here. <coughs> Press that to turn it on. You can see the light turn off when it's off. Pull the stock towards you for the spray for the front and push the stock away for the rear spray. On the left side here, we have our blinkers as well as our high beams, which you'll notice at the base of the screen there are automatic, so the high beams will come on um, when they're allowed to be on. As far as, as long as there's not another vehicle coming towards you, they'll be on. When the vehicle comes towards you, they'll shut off until that vehicle's passed. If you need to flash your brights, you can still do so just by pulling the stock towards you. On the end of this stock, we have our lane keep assist. You'll see that there when it's turned on. Again, that will give you a vibration warning if you begin to live, leave your lane. And if you don't correct yourself, the vehicle will give you a steering correction to move back into your lane. Down below here, we have our cruise control. And you'll see to turn the cruise on, pull the stock towards us. To set the speed, we push the end of the stock there to increase or decrease our speed we click up or down we can adjust the distance we have set with this toggle here and you'll see as we adjust that we have the display here showing our vehicle and the vehicle in front of us and allow us to adjust the distance as necessary we can also cancel by pushing the stock away turn it off by pushing it all the way away, and then resume with just a, a quick pull back towards you. Looking to our left, we have our headlight controls and our light switches here. So the headlights are automatic. They'll come on as necessary. We also have fog lights and our rear fog lights there. And lastly, a dial to adjust the brightness of everything inside when the lights are turned on. Looking at the door, we have our door locks and our driver's seat memory presets. Simply press set and hit the number that you'd like to be to save your position of your seat, your wheel, and your mirrors. Looking at the switches here, we have our child locks for the two rear doors. We have our window switches and we have our mirror controls. So we simply rotate to which mirror we'd like to adjust and it's a joystick that allows us to move it. You can also rotate that to this position to fold the mirrors in. And then we have our heated mirror function there as well. We rotate all the way around clockwise to access that function. Just down below here, we have the button to open and close the powered lift gate. You can do so from inside or from a button on the key fob or from the actual lift gate itself. Looking up above, we have our uh, some light controls here. So we have our interior dome lights. The dome lights themselves are just touch sensitive to turn them on. If we just want to turn on the rear dome lights, we can do that as well. We have our door function, which tells the dome lights to come on when the door has been opened. button there with the wrench on it and information is our online roadside assistance 
how much does it require that function to be activated. We have our SOS button to if they're an emergency. We have our three programmable garage door buttons. And then right in the middle, we have our controls for our sunroof, which is a panoramic sunroof here. The rear switch controls the shade. And you'll see that coming forward there. And then the front switch would control the actual glass. This is the glass going back there. Those are the primary functions of this 2017 Audi Q7 Premium Plus. If you have any further questions, please refer to us at waltersautos.com or feel free to call 269-375-7008. Thank you.